There's been a lot of people recently wanting to get a look inside the bread truck. You want to come inside? Come on, let's go. You don't need a warrant or anything. <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Paul Barger and this is my Van Life Step Van. It's a 1989 Utila Master P30 with a Cummins four-cylinder turbo diesel motor in it. It gets me 14 miles to the gallon. One of my favorite things about my truck is my fully functional kitchen. I have hot and cold running water, a sink, um, you know, a spice rack up here. I have storage for pots and pans, food. There's more food up here and drinking water inside this cabinet. Um, it really gives you a really nice feeling of home and um, a nice full kitchen. This is probably the area I use the most as well. Um, I love cooking for friends and uh, the, my truck can hold a lot of people so um, it's great to have friends over and I can cook food and uh, really like entertain. When I was looking for a vehicle to build into my step van uh, rig, I wanted something that you could stand up in and it turns out I found something that has a lot of room to stand up in. As you can see, I can jump up and down, I got plenty of room, um, I can almost fully extend my arms all the way to the ceiling and um, being able to stand and cook is just such a nice uh, feeling of, it feels like a real home, you know, it's not, I'm, it's not like I'm in a van, it's like I'm in a small studio apartment. I have this nice little cutting board that gives me way more counter space, but you can lift it out. I have a very large sink. This is 17 inches by 17 inches wide. A nice little feature that I like is I built this backlit um, backsplash for the truck. It just kind of gives you a illusion that there's a window here. Um, it also does a little um, neat display if I want some change of lights. Right above the backsplash I had a little ledge here and I built a nice spice rack so all my spices are in there. I have you know just everything right there at my fingertips it's a great little storage space. And just a little decorative touch. This is a very cheap magnet that was purchased at Harbor Freight but I found it to be very useful. All of my stuff is stored up there. Um, everything I need to eat with is right at my fingertips. Surprisingly, this is actually strong enough to hold everything. And those pieces don't even fall off when I drive. It's uh, really worked out good. I'm gonna get another one and put it somewhere else in the van. Uh, this is just a copper cup that I drink out of all the time. Um, I really like that. Although I do have hot and cold running water, I don't drink out of that tank. So this is how we dispense water for drinking. Um, I store my water container up there, holds about two and a half gallons. So up here, is the little breakfast nook. All the breakfast foods are up here. Makes it easy to kind of compartmentalize your food for cooking different meals. And then over in this cabinet is where I have all the other food for all the other times of the day. This is something that everybody has just loved when they see it in my truck and it's so simple. When I'm traveling, these doors would just sling right open. So i would made this little block of wood. All it does is drop in there and you can't open the cabinet. When I'm in travel mode, these little blocks of wood is what holds my cabinets closed. I'm a big believer in repurposing, recycling materials, and all of the stuff that you see here, except for the sink and um, plumbing things, was pulled out of the trash. I got this out of the trash. Um, these came out of dumpsters. It's all dumpster dive material and, you know, repurposed wood in my truck. What I use for cooking is a very basic Coleman two burner stove. I have plenty of counter space up here to put my stove and cook from up here. Um, but that takes up a lot of counter space. So what I did was I built a side table here that flips out and I can set my stove up right over here. And this is great. I love a two burner stove because you can cook for a lot of people with two burners. One, one burner is a little bit limited. And this doesn't use very much propane at all. Um, the reason I use propane is I have three different devices in the truck that run on propane. My on-demand water heater, my buddy heater, and my two burner stove. 
Down here below the counter, I built a little shelf and there is a Yeti cooler. We don't keep all that much refrigerated things on board because uh, it's high maintenance keeping ice and things like that for the Yeti cooler. But this does a great job, like a good three days solid of storage in this um, with refrigerated goods. Um, this is one thing that I do want to upgrade in the truck is to uh, get like a Dometic fridge or a 12 volt fridge that um, fits in this spot and um, that'll be a little upgrade coming soon. Behind the cooler here is the water pump for the plumbing and under here is just a little bit of open space. There's a bin for storage. My Mr. Buddy heater lives underneath there. This area right here is the wheel well. Um, it's kind of a tricky space to use because it's raised about 12 inches off the floor. Um, I always envisioned having a little sitting area here so that's why I built this. Uh, what I did was I raised it up a little bit higher than where the wheel well is so that I could utilize the space for a shoe box. So all my shoes go in there, keeps it nice and neat and when I'm dirty or something like that I can come right in my back door, put the shoes away and get out whatever shoes are appropriate, appropriate for the day. Above my shoe box, I have an electrical panel. This goes over to my solar system with a 2000 uh, watt power inverter. Um, it runs a lot of things. A 2000 watt is very powerful. I can run my air conditioner when it's in full sun. I can run mixers, all sorts of kitchen appliances. I've even run a hot wax, like waxing uh, hair removal machine off of it one time. Um, that's a story for another time though. Um, I got another cabinet up here for some small condiments. I have like oils, things like that, vinegar, bigger bottles. Um, this is a very handy little rack that uh, we put in that, uh, you know, these are daily items that we use all the time, like essential oils in here, um, vinegar solution for cleaning, Burt's Bees, uh, <laughs> exfoliating wipes, suntan lotion, uh, beard oil, all that kind of stuff. Beard oil from winter sun, it's awesome. Um, this wall I really love. This is the first like reclaimed wall that I built in the truck. And I think it has just a really cool look to it. I use all sorts of stuff. I helped a friend take down a fence in Oregon and um, put up a new one. So this is a mixture of a few new panels, but mostly the old panels from the fence. I just think it looks really cool. Behind the door here, I have even drawer fronts. Um, I like different textures. I didn't really care uh, what kind of things I put up, but I think they all look really great together. I met one of my subscribers and uh, he gave me my first ever in-person 420 Super Chat. So uh, I had to put it up on my wall. I thought it was a really a uh, thoughtful gift for my friend to give me, uh, but yeah, super chat. <laughs> this is the back wall of my truck. This is where my living space ends. I always envisioned having just a regular residential door back here. Um, it opens inward and there's a lot of reasons for that. A lot of people have criticized me for putting it to open inward, but I think there's huge advantages of it. The reasons that I made it open inward is that I had so much living space that I really could afford to lose the swing of the door. And when I'm not traveling, I can still stack things here. Um, another thing is, is when I'm parked and I'm hanging out, I didn't want a big door hanging out the back of my truck. To, you know, that's a huge thing. It's not in the way when you're parked and hanging out behind the, the truck. Another reason that I have it open inward is that if I'm ever backed up close against something, I wouldn't be able to open my door. Sometimes I'm in tight parking lots, I back up against a fence or something like that. I can still open my door, get some air, and if you had to open out, you'd be so much more limited because I do park right up against stuff quite a bit. The door is constructed out of fiberglass. It's a fiberglass residential exterior door with a PVC frame, so it will never rot. And um, it's been really good, it doesn't leak. Um, unless it's a really, really crazy downpour, I might get just a little bit of water just at the bottom, but I have very little water intrusion into my truck. Deadbolt and a regular door handle on the back. One thing I do quite often is when I park in a beautiful place like this, I'll arrange it so that my door faces out to this beautiful bay right here. Uh, we're on the Puget Sound right now, and as you can see, it's a breathtaking view. Um, it is really great to be laying in bed 
and to have a view like that and the fresh air and breeze blowing through the truck so I have a nice blow through uh, you know I have a nice airflow of wind that comes through the truck when I have the front and the rear open uh, I did a lot of van life recently down in Orlando Florida which is where I'm from most of my traveling has been away from Florida but it is extremely hot there so I added in a portable air conditioner um, this requires a duct to go to the outside, so I cut a hole through the wall and put the duct going out. But this is hooked up so that the water condensation from the unit drains out to the floor. Um, I can run this off my generator, and I can even run it off my solar system if I have full sun in the middle of the day. Um, it will run on my solar system. I just need a bigger battery bank. This is a Jackery power unit. It's called the Jackery Explorer 240. Um, this is a great little unit. I have a solar system, but I have a very minimal battery bank. So if I ever need a little bit of supplemental power, I can turn off my system in the truck, switch over to the Jackery, and edit for two more hours on my computer with this very easily. Um, or whatever, charge batteries and all sorts of things. It's actually a very powerful little thing. This is my YouTube command center. Uh, most of the work I've done on my channel was done right here at my desk. This is one of the first things I built in the truck. I wanted a workspace that could be really productive and this is dedicated to work. I have a full-size desktop computer. It has an 8 inch subwoofer that's 2.1 um, THX stereo, um, a 23 inch computer monitor and internet capability and everything. Um, I'm really looking to upgrade this to a MacBook Pro. That's definitely something that will up my game on YouTube, so that will be coming soon. This right here is a piece of firewood that Ellie gave me. I thought it was so cool. It's been eaten by um, by bugs, yeah, little beetles. So I thought it just had a really cool look, so I just bolted it into my truck. That's one thing that's fun about this truck. You could do anything you want. I have this uh, 2000 watt Predator generator here this is for backup um, if I need to run the air conditioner it'll run off of that generator it's very efficient and uh, if I'm really struggling on my battery bank and my power system I can shut it all down just run off of this and not damage my batteries sometimes I'm up late editing video things like that and I gotta get it done so that is my like emergency power pack this area right here is my closet Right now I just have a simple burlap sack hanging to cover so it's not as busy. But what I usually do is I just roll it up, stick it out of the way, and I have tons of room here for hanging clothes. All my clothes for the most part are, are hanging and I have some fabric boxes here that I just pull out and smaller things that are in there like socks and things like that. Um, plenty of storage for clothes, I mean I have everything I need in here, I even have a wetsuit. This mirror here is something that I absolutely love. It's a cheap little Ikea mirror, it's $10, but it's great in the van. You can cut your hair, you can do whatever you need to do and swing it out um, depending on what light you need. So it actually is really great, cheap little Ikea thing. The reason that I chose the space for my closet is, again, there's a wheel well on this side, so it's kind of useless space. This is the width of the entire wheel well, and my entire solar system is contained within here. This cabinet was built out of a dresser. That's how I also built my office. Um, it's a dresser that I pulled out of a dumpster, and I just thought it was really neat looking wood, so this is what I use. Um, this flips out right here and makes a table. I have a, a little leg that comes down. So I have some extra space here for playing cards, games, eating, whatever. Um, underneath, when you open this up, that reveals my solar system. I have four AGM batteries with 380 amp hours of power. There is my 2000 watt um, Ames um, power inverter. I have a Midnight Classic SL150 solar controller. And then I also have a smaller 300 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter up there. Honestly, I use the 300 watt more than the, than the 2000, but this is great for big power stuff. This is at the head of my bed and on top of the solar system. It's a little power center right here. I have two USB ports and also a cigarette adapter. 
This is a great little meter that I have here. You can see where the battery bank is at at a glance. Um, the only problem is it's a little bit bright and it shines into my bed, so I usually stuff a pillow over it, over it every night. But this is great because when I go to bed, I can plug all my phones, cameras, drones, everything in right there and have another access to power. Above my headboard little power system, I have three shelves just for some extra blankets, towels, hats, gloves, and things like that. Uh, also something very important, I have a CO2 and carbon monoxide detector. I, don't, I highly recommend it for everybody that's using a van for van life. Also here I have room to hang things. This is a toiletries bag. Um, these are nice. They're a couple little um, USB rechargeable fans. So if it's warm, we can place these around the van and cool off a little bit. Um, this is another favorite feature of my van. This is my lighting system. It's just a simple remote. This controls the color, the brightness, and um, it's really great. It was cheap. The whole system cost me about $65, and it's been one of my favorite things in my van. I think you might have been in that shot a little. Oh, whoops. <laughs> now we're moving over to the bedroom area, and I have a little shelf, a little knickknack shelf. This is my Volkswagen bus, little birdhouse that I, uh, customized paint and screwed into the shelf. Uh, I also like having a little tiny house inside of my tiny house and a little mirror ball just for just for party nights. I wanted to tell you guys about my bed. It is a small single, it's a cot size when it's folded up. It can be used as a couch during the day. But these underneath are really just a box within a box. It's a large box on top of a smaller box. I slide this out. I'll give you a little preview about how it works. Um, I'm not going to slide it all out, but this folds all the way out into a queen size bed. And, um, you know, very simple. I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do with my bed, so I did know I wanted a queen. This is a temporary solution, though. Uh, this whole thing is completely removable. I can take all these boxes out within five minutes, really. And uh, this whole space is open with flooring all the way to the wall. Um, it's a really huge space here. so. I have the option of putting in a Murphy bed or some sort of other solution, but this was just a very easy way to uh, get a queen size bed that is convertible. One thing I really wanted was two air vents in my in my van because of airflow. Um, I got two Max Air fans. Um, they're 14 inch standard camping size fans, but they have a shroud on the outside where they can be open and left open in the rain. Um, that's come in handy many times when it's a little bit warm in here, but I still want airflow. I can open these up, turn this big fan and get some air flowing. The nice thing about having two is that I could make one blow out, one bring air in, and you get this great revolution of air coming through the truck. Um, as you can see, I still have not permanently wired them, but I'm getting there. That's, that's on the list of things to do. A lot of people don't even notice this about my truck, but there's a bathroom in this area right here. That's the edge of my kitchen, and then this is the front of my truck where I drive. Um, the way I designed it so that this door would be a dual purpose door, it closes off the bathroom, but also closes off the front section. I just have a little bungee there to hold it tight, but as you can see, I can just close the door off and it can go either way. Sometimes at night we sleep with this door open, sometimes it's closed. It just depends on where we're at, what kind of level of stealth we need, and what kind of airflow is needed. There's a couple different configurations that it works in. When the door is closed, it's a pretty high level of privacy and stealth. Um, very little light is, is able to be seen from the front and it really makes it much quieter inside the truck. This is my bathroom. I really wanted some old rusty tin in here, so I found some corrugated steel and put that on the wall. I also constructed the toilet box out of corrugated steel um, in the front. And I really wanted a galvanized tub for my shower, so I drilled a hole in it. I just drilled a hole for drainage. And up here you can see that I actually have a shower with hot and cold running water. It's a nice shower head. This can come off and I can use it for other things like filling water containers, washing my feet and washing dirty items as well in the tub. It works really good. Here you can see my plumbing. It's a little bit exposed, but that's okay. Uh, this is how you turn my shower on and off. Top is cold, bottom is hot. Simple, simple. 
This is a vanity that I found at a thrift store for five bucks. I really think it looks cool. It has a mirror in it. It's pretty great. I have all my bathroom type stuff in here for the most part. Toothbrushes, toilet paper, Q-tips, all those kind of things. This is my toilet box. It is really just a fancy bucket with a box around it. But um, I have a bucket inside that has a screw on lid, totally sealable. On this side, I have a little hinge compartment. This opens up like this. I have sawdust in there for the composting toilet. This is my flooring. It is vinyl flooring, and at this point, it does need to be redone. It's not something that I'm really uh, happy with. I'd like to get hard wood floor for the truck eventually. A lot of people are curious about insulation. I got really lucky on this truck. It came as an insulated truck already. The ceiling has an inch and a, inch and a half of insulation and the walls have one inch foam board insulation. I also built that front wall with two inch foam board insulation. It has a very high R value. It stays very warm in here in cold climate and it stays pretty cool in here in direct sunlight. This is my captain's chair. Uh, this is where I drive this beast. It's a four speed manual, so I do a lot of shifting. This chair is out of a Subaru Forester. Um, it's a little bit more comfortable than what came in the thing originally. It does recline and it has a headrest. Uh, the old one didn't move at all, so that's great. Um, under the seat, there's a lot of space, so I have storage room. There's I can put a bin underneath or uh, camping chairs, things of that nature. You do usually go down there. Up here I have GoPro mounts. I have uh, two comp cameras on my windshield usually at all times uh, and these come in really handy. <laughs> this is another feature of the truck that I absolutely love. Uh, my friends in Montana, uh, Barn Sharks, made this for me. Uh, it is a steel knuckle shifter. Um, it actually says around the outside of it, made in North Dakota with love. But uh, it's actually kind of comfortable and I like driving with that shifter. It's really, uh, really cool. I installed this myself after my first year out on the road. When I first left, I had no power capability whatsoever up here. So I needed charging ports. Um, this here, that's my horn. Um, I have a cigarette adapter 12 volt here that runs off the truck battery separate from my solar system and I have two of them. Um, what I did was this one is on the switch that goes to the key so I can leave something plugged in here at all times and it cannot drain the battery because the key will be off. And then these other two are full time. If I have things plugged into these, these will be draining my battery, but I also wanted something that will be on all the time if I want access to it. Uh, this one is nice. It has a little digital readout. You can see my battery for the truck is at 12.6 right now. It also has a little USB charger, so that's great for my phone or batteries that I need to charge when I'm on the road. This is the dashboard of my truck. I wanted it to stay as clean and neat as possible so it didn't look like people are living in it. I do have a couple things that might give me away, such as my little succulent plant that is on the dash in the night crawlers box there. Um, another thing I used here is a level so that when I'm parking, I can see how level the truck is at the, a glance from the driver's seat. And of course you gotta have a little hula girl. I wanted to show you guys the passenger seat. This is the jump seat. It is not very comfortable. Um, it was added later and um, you know, it's so that you can still use the step and come in, um, folds up out of the way. It's very uh, uncomfortable to ride in. The back is kind of straight up. So I'm looking for another solution uh, where I could still use a step and have a folding seat, something to make maybe like a minivan seat. But um, yeah, that's that. This is uh, my, hot water system. It's a on-demand propane water heater. Uh, it's very efficient, uses very little propane, and it doesn't have to worry about heating a tank all the time. Um, it's just on-demand and when it senses it needs pressure in the system, it will fire up and heat the water you know, as it goes. Uh, I got a little bit of exposed plumbing here, but I think it looks kind of cool. It's nice and clean. This is a Camp Lux brand uh, on-demand water heater. Um, what I find too is it doesn't give off very much heat and um, or flame you don't ever see any of that this is the reason it's called a step van this is my only entrance uh, in the front I don't have a driver's side door but I use the step to come in and out and a lot of times I drive with the door open because it's 
you know, kind of warm. And uh, it's much nicer breeze inside with the door open. The area is nice in this truck because it's lower than all the other floor. Um, it is nice you can come in here with muddy shoes or whatever, kick them off right here and go onto a clean surface and then use just water and hose it all out. It's all made out of aluminum and it won't rot or rust. So um, this is a very useful little area. The water just drains right out. No big deal. What I love about step vans is that they have sliding doors. It doesn't have a door that opens into another car so I can park in a tight spot and just slide the door open and closed and um, I don't need much clearance on the sides. Believe it or not, as big as this truck is, it fits in a regular car parking spot. It may over overhang just a little bit, but um, for the most part, it does fit if I can find a good place to park where I can back into it or something like that. I can usually get in most uh, parking lots. The primary reason I bought this truck is because of the Cummins four-cylinder turbo diesel. It's a 4BT, a legendary motor. They go for a million miles. Um, the best thing about it is that I get 14 miles to the gallon in this diesel truck. Um, a lot of people don't believe me. I've kept very meticulous record of all of the gas or all of the diesel I've put into it over the entire life of the truck. So I have a 14 mile per gallon average. Um, it's just a beast. It, goes up mountains. Um, I do have to slow down on high climbs and stuff like that, very steep inclines. It just keeps chugging away and um, it gets up mountains no problem. It's got plenty of power for this 10,000 pound truck. I know it sounds kind of strange, but I've always had a thing for bread trucks. How utilitarian they are, how basic and boxy and square they are. But take a look at that front end. I don't know, it has a certain personality to it. A lot of times I look at it and I'm like, oh, cute little bread truck. This has only 16 inch wheels, so I'm riding on regular heavy, heavy passenger truck tires. Uh, I believe it improved the ride a lot um, from the old commercial tires that were on it. Um, I painted the wheels back to red, just like it was when it was a bread truck, and it has a dually rear end, so it's capable of carrying a lot of, uh, a lot of weight. Mounted behind this panel, there's a 46 gallon freshwater tank. Uh, you can see it here, it sticks out just a little bit below the body. Got a little body damage there, don't worry about that. But um, I plan to add more tanks, and uh, but 46 gallons is a really good start. I do have another 46 gallon in front of that, but um, that one's not hooked up just yet, it's just mounted. Um, and then the big old red bread truck wheels, I think it definitely, they, someone had painted them black, I turned them back to red, I think it definitely makes it look more like a bread truck again. That's what they were originally. It has these big meaty bumpers on it. They got to be like quarter inch steel all the way around. I really hate them. I'm going to get them replaced, but that's what I got for right now. And they definitely are strong. <laughs> this is the back of my truck. Uh, what I use to build this wall is uh, four inch refrigeration paneling. It's very similar to what they use in a walk-in cooler. Um, it is really, really great for insulation. Here's the backup camera right here. Um, and uh, the infamous marker lights that everybody knows about now. Steel front bumper. This is just how it came from the, it's like a C beam, like a half of an I beam. It's massive. The way I mounted my solar panels is very simple. I use a cheap Amazon cargo van ladder rack and I got some angle iron or angle aluminum and just put it together. I have 700 watts of power on the roof there. I plan on a very big expansion of this roof deck. You can see how little roof space that actually takes up. I have room for several more panels. I can definitely foresee this van having a giant roof deck and a roof hatch that I can climb out of from the inside. The entire body is all aluminum. The only thing that's steel on this is the frame and suspension. All these body panels is all aluminum. The roof, the walls, everything. Makes it very light, very strong, and won't corrode. This truck body is made by Utilimaster with the GMC P30 frame, and the overall length bumper to bumper is just over 21 feet. The height of the truck to the top of the body itself is nine foot four inches. With the ladder rack, it's just over 10 feet, about 10 foot two inches. The color that the truck is right now with the red wheels, the tan color, is the color that it was when it was in service. Uh, with the bread company. The best thing in my opinion about a step van is the stealth. 
Um, this thing is a city camping machine. Um, you can get into a lot of locations that really doesn't allow overnight camping because it looks like a bread delivery truck. So that's it guys. That's the tour of my van. You saw it all, inside and out. And we're out of here. We gotta get back on the road. We got things to do. We got places to go, people to see. If you made it to the end, you're a trooper. And thank you very much for watching. There's a very special treat for you coming up just a moment. So please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed my van tour. See you on the next video. Until then, safe travels and lots of love.